The Great Stress That Jesus Faced Many people think that the road to the cross was easy for Jesus. If the decision were easy, the value of Jesus' sacrifice would be diminished. We read that Jesus was overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Imagine this. You were about to go through one of the most painful deaths a person can experience. There will be humiliation and insults thrown at you. And the people coming to arrest you are coming soon. The book of Luke tells the story of Jesus' final journey to his death. From his prayer in Gethsemane, where his faith in God is confirmed, to his burial, the Bible describes how an innocent man came to die for others. The Gospels each include a narrative that describes the time that Jesus, his disciples, and others spent in the Garden of Gethsemane, just before Jesus was arrested. Jesus prayed to his Father in the Garden three times, saying, And after going a little farther, he fell face down and prayed, saying, My Father, if it is possible that is consistent with your will, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Matthew 26, verse 39, Amplified Bible. A little later, Jesus prays. He went away a second time and prayed, saying, My Father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, yours will be done. Matthew 26, verse 42. These prayers shed light on Jesus' state of mind immediately prior to his crucifixion and demonstrate his complete surrender to the will of God. The cup that Jesus is referring to is the suffering that was going to befall him in the future. It is as if Jesus were being presented with a cup that was full of bitterness, and it was expected of him to drink the entire thing. In Matthew 20, verse 22, Jesus talked about suffering. But Jesus replied, You do not realize what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup of suffering that I am about to drink? They answered, We are able. Matthew 20, verse 22. When Jesus prays to the Father, Let this cup pass from me. He is expressing the natural human desire to avoid pain and suffering. Jesus is fully God, but he is also fully human. Though perfect, his human nature still struggled with the need to accept the torture and shame that awaited him. His flesh recoiled from the cross. In the same context, Jesus tells his disciples the following. Keep actively watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Matthew 26, verse 41. When Jesus prayed, Let this cup pass from me, he was fighting against the desires of his flesh, which yearned for self-preservation and comfort. The struggle was fierce, overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Then, he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved, so that I am almost dying of sorrow. Stay here, and stay awake, and keep watch with me. Matthew 26, verse 38. This prayer, more than anything else, demonstrates that Jesus was in every way fully human. Jesus had foreknowledge of what was to come. Mark 8, verse 31, Amplified Bible. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must of necessity suffer many things and be rejected as the Messiah by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and must be put to death, and after three days rise from death to life. The torment that he was going to go through was going to be more than just physical. It was also going to be mental and spiritual. Jesus was aware that it was God's plan for him to be crucified, that God wanted him to be pierced for our transgressions and wounded for our healing. Jesus knew that this was the will of God. 
Isaiah 53 verses 5 to 7 But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing. The punishment required for our well-being fell on him, and by his stripes, wounds, we are healed. All of us like sheep have gone astray. We have turned each one to his own way. But the Lord has caused the wickedness of us all, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing, to fall on him instead of us. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth to complain or defend himself. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before her shearers, so he did not open his mouth. Jesus loves mankind, but his humanity dreaded the pain and sorrow he faced, and it drove him to ask his father, Let this cup pass from me. The phrase, Let this cup pass from me, appears in Jesus' prayer, and it contains two significant qualifications. To begin, he utters the prayer, If it is possible. Jesus implores his Father to let him choose an alternative path to redemption for humankind, if one exists. Jesus did not want to die, but he did follow the will of God. The events that occurred after he prayed demonstrate that there was no other way. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ is the only one that could possibly redeem the world. John 1 verse 29 The next day he saw Jesus coming to him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Revelation 5 verse 9 And they sang a new song of glorious redemption, saying, Worthy and deserving are you to take the scroll and to break its seals, for you were slain, sacrificed, And with your blood you purchased people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Second, Jesus prays, Yet not as I will, but as you will. Jesus was committed to the will of God, body, mind and soul. The prayer of the righteous is always dependent on the will of God. Matthew 6 verse 10, Amplified Bible Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. In the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus conquered the flesh and kept it in subjection to the Spirit. He accomplished this by submitting himself wholeheartedly and fervently to the will of God. When we go through difficult times, it is comforting to know that Jesus understands what it's like to want God's will and yet to not want it, to desire righteousness and obedience, even when the flesh is screaming out against it. This conflict is not sinful. It is a normal part of being human. Our Redeemer fully embodied human nature in every respect. Hebrews 2 verse 17 Therefore it was essential that He had to be made like His brothers, mankind, in every respect, so that he might, by experience, become a merciful and faithful high priest in things related to God, to make atonement, propriation, for the people's sins, thereby wiping away the sin, satisfying divine justice, and providing a way of reconciliation between God and mankind.